humor. I just, it's another and silly, it's another silly hoax that we have to deal with. Every, every day, every time we go on the air, we got to deal with these silly uh, hoaxes of, you know, it's being recorded, it's being listened to, it's being watched, it's being this, it's being that. Good Lord, how many hoaxes can we contend with? Well, that not, just that's going to be simple compared to remembering all the 30 nations of the economic uh, group called the European Union. And then you got to know everybody who's in NATO. Then you got to know where the border. You got to know. You got to know each border and what border. What, what, what border can you get through? Can you get into Moldova? Is it better to go to Hungary? Hungary? No, no, don't go to Hungary. Everybody's going to Poland. Why are they going to Poland? It's simple. It's in the West. There's no shelling over there. Poland well, is the good. Poland is the key. Poland is you, Poland is World War Three. We're gonna yeah we're we're gonna work out of Warsaw because that's gonna that's gonna be the the capital of the the front of resistance of the new soviet union oh lord he's michael knight he is in los angeles where it's sunny and maybe we even will even get to 70 degrees and uh, he's new york Vinny. he's in seattle with a nice flag behind him yes with the ukrainian a nice piece of art ukrainian flag i just want to give this a plug because i was uh jumping across the internet and i found this this is available in a print um it's by setsiri Silla Pashawachai. That's as close as I can get to it, pal. <laughs> that, doesn't sound, that doesn't sound very Ukrainian. But if you go on uh, fineartamerica.com, you can buy this print that's behind me, uh, eight by eight size for $18.34. And I think that that is uh, a good way to support uh, Sitsiri. I'm not going to try his last name again. Uh, Sitsiri. And uh, so I don't he's, know. He's, He's a sincere guy, or she is a sin oh, sin 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 sincere gal. Uh, you know, let's see if we can tell what Setsiri is, but Setsiri certainly. Uh, oh, no, he looks well. No, now wait a second. He's got a picture of Albert Einstein up, or he looks like. I uh, graduated from Chiang Mai University, fine art, Chiang Mai, Thailand, since 1995. Ah, he's Thai. Yeah, he's got a lot of, yeah, he's got a lot of good stuff, a lot of cool stuff on here. Setsiri. Silla Pasuanchai. There Silla you go. Pasuanchai. Never, they never say anything in Thailand that isn't better said in five syllables. Silla Pasuanchai, walking down the street, making up some pretty art for you and how to eat. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where you were going with the meat. Well, he was going to, it's the kind of art you can eat. And when we're through with this, I'm going to eat this chair. Then he's going to eat that flag. What are you going to do? Well, that's that ice art. You know, it's, it's like that stuff you see with the ice art. You always see, you say, it's a shame this guy spent 30 hours carving out these swans. And, you know, by the end of the wedding, they're gone. They're gone. Just or like... somebody's carrying them out to the car and not realize by the time they get home, <laughs> it's going to be a flood in their backseat. Uh, he's got another print on here that's really cool with some television. So uh, I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could actually bring it up. Can but, you switch your room? I'm going to try this for the first time now. This may work. This may not. I'm going to try to share the screen. This could take uh, us off the air forever. This, yes, this is going to get yes. us kicked off Facebook. Yes. Let's see if we can share the screen. Okay. Desktop two and share. Okay, and share. Oh, I see. You shared the whole page and now I see it. The televisions. Do you see the televisions? Oh, yes. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. I even see the uh, the whole page of Fine Out America, so now I know where you're getting your stuff. Yeah, it's uh, you know, I got no connection to or anything. Just uh, no, I like them. Yeah, now I just have to get back to full screen. Now there we are. Now, let's see. We have to get rid of this because we're going to add Rod Long at ten thirty. <clears throat> yeah, now now I got to figure out how to get rid of it. Uh, uh, Lordy, 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 Mikey. I smite thee. No, that doesn't work. No, that didn't do it. All right, back to meeting. The, the Lord compels you to go. Oh, let's try. That always works. No, that doesn't work. Let's go back to the meeting. All right, let's do it this way. There's always one way you can do it. This is the time of the day where I start looking for the undo button. And there's Vinny eating pizza, it looks like. Or is eating something. Could be cannoli. Stop shit. It's cannoli. Yeah, that's uh, for the San Gennaro feast. That is um, 
my sister Patty, who is uh, not with us anymore, my sister Marianne, uh, my brother-in-law Matt, me and my brother Dominic and his wife standing right in front of him. There's everybody you need to know. Yeah, oh, really. Yeah. And we're all just having a fun time at uh, a fun time at the San Gennaro Fair. That was the day that, uh, you know, I was still married at that point. And that was the day that uh, Cousin Brucey hit on my wife. Whoa. <laughs> I, there I go, Bru chatting cousin Brucey up the hook because she's from Southern California. She doesn't know, you know, cousin Brucey. And we and he's appearing, you know, he's doing a he always does that thing with, with at the time. I think he was with WCBS at the San Gennaro mm -hmm. Fair. He hosts the, the oldie stage there. And so I walk up to him. I'd met him at the city and met him a few times before. And so I bring my wife and hey Bruce, I don't remember me, Vinny Ricci, New York Vinny from San Francisco. He goes, Oh yeah, cousin. Hey, who's this pretty woman? <laughs> I mean, it was so typical DJ. Why don't you run and get us a couple of drinks? Yeah, right. why don't you go get us a couple of peaches and wine while I sit here and talk to the lady? <laughs> <laughs> Hiya, cousin. Hey, listen, I'm from Arkansas. There ain't no rules about kissing cousins down here. <laughs> and the rules are that they encourage it. <laughs> Even after all that they've been through, they still encourage uh, you. And I'm sitting, my she's looking at me, and I'm going, "All right, let's get out of here." <laughs> I don't want to meet any more disc jockeys. Yeah, I'm done. I meant if this is your idol. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh lordy, 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 lordy! It's such a well, he sent me a bumper sticker when I was twelve. I never got over it. Who, who sent you one? Anybody, you know? Oh. I, I, I remember when it, I won nine dollars and ten cents from KEWB. Uh, Scott Bridges, whose real name was uh, George, Greg L. Elwell, Roy Elwell, who was, uh, went by that name in Los Angeles, but he was Scott Bridges in San Francisco. And I won $9.10 from him, some sort of bridge club that he was a, a disc jockey. I joined the bridge club. And they called my name or they called my number or something. I couldn't believe it. Yep, $9. That's all I ever got. That's all I've ever gotten out of radio. Now that... <laughs> Come to mention it. I won. Um, let's see. Well, I won tickets to the big break. That was the first thing I ever won on radio, which was a a concert uh, that they had at the uh, New York Hilton uh, that would give local bands um, a big break. I didn't see him a break, and cousin Brucey hosted it. That's the first time I ever met him. He told me to sit down, and I was I was a little too loud and crazy. I can't believe that. Concert. That must have been that must have been somebody else. Yeah. Another disc jockey and another venue because that doesn't add up. That doesn't add up with the way I know the world. And then in San Francisco, uh, it's one of the first weeks I got to San Francisco, I won a collection of Beatles books from Gene Nelson. Holy moly. On KSFO. The KSFO slash, was it slash KSFO KYA during their no, simulcast days? It was days? just KSFO at the time, I think. And um, we called in for something. I'll never forget this. We were living in a one-room studio, my my girlfriend and I at the time. And um, she was in the shower. <laughs> and I'm on the phone with, with you know, Nelson's producers put me on hold for a second. And so she comes out of the shower and says, who are you talking to? I said, I'm talking to Gene Nelson on the radio. She says, ah! <laughs> <That's> just, <laughs> I see you on the radio. <laughs> He can't see you. Gene's busy with his show. Yeah, he can't now, see now the, you on the, the producer, Now the producer, he can see you, yeah. All right, the producer's another story, but Gene, he's not going to see you. So, all right, we've had some comedy this morning. We'll probably have a little more comedy coming up because we are scheduled at 10.30 to be joined by our good friend, comedian, cancer survivor, and uh, one of our original crew, Back in the 90s, Rod Long. In and, fact, he'll be here in five or six minutes. Yeah, he'll be here in about five or six minutes. Um, for those of you who may not know Rod Long, who may be listening from places afar. Hey, we um, don't know him either. So we don't, don't, know him either. don't, 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 don't get all excited about this. Nobody knows him. No, he's the man of mystery. Yeah, he, he has. Uh, well, you know, he is. He's, uh, he's the comics comic. You know, the problem with Rod Long, not a problem. But I can't imagine that he can do much of his act anymore because his act was so politically incorrect that there are things he probably couldn't say 
it's not just with Rod, but with many comics. I, I have a joke that, that I remembered that he, um, that he used. It has no meaning anymore because of the way we wear our hair. The difference between 1993 or 90, 1992 and 2020 is that, that the joke that I'll tell you when we get to him has no meaning anymore. It's still funny when you think about it, but at that time, it, it made absolute perfect sense. Now it doesn't. We're, we're so used to the way people wear their hair in a different way, and I'll, I'll, I'll save that for you. Okay. But, uh, but other, other than waiting for our comedian friend to join us, it wasn't a very fun weekend. No, it, it wasn't. Um, I don't know if the ceasefire, you know, there's, there's, there's a humanitarian ceasefire going on I, so that they can clear people out of Ukraine. I don't know how that's going or what's exactly going on here, the latest, but... Uh, My last version of that was that the ceasefire was talked about, but it never took place. I had seen reported, I believe, on either CBS or CNN this morning that uh, the ceasefire actually has has taken place, and they're, they're that's good. That's trying good to rush as many. Matter of fact, I'm going to go look right now. They're trying to rush as many people out of there as they they can. Mikey, I think the question is going to be simply this: Or do we as Americans have a stomach for two things? Number one, higher gas prices. Looking at seven, eight dollars a gallon for gas. Although I cannot figure out, I got to tell you, I can't figure out exactly why if Russia produces 12% of the world's oil or 12% of the oil that we buy, how, it, why are gas, I mean, we can make up 12% in this country. We can make up more than 12%. This is just ceremonial gouging. It has nothing to do with the price of oil or the availability of oil. There won't be an oil shortage. And it also is a fun for the, the, our good friends in Saudi Arabia to say, this isn't our fight. This isn't our, this isn't our problem. This isn't anything that we're going to address with different production levels. This is not something that we're going to help you with because after all, that's your war, white people. We don't have a war going on. We're, we're right here in Saudi Arabia and we're not involved with this in any way except to ensure that the prices remain high. As for the American corporations and the international corporations that produce oil for the whole planet, they have no interest in helping the United States. This is their ceremonial gouge. Exxon, Shell, Standard Oil, Arco, any of the companies that you know, all the places that you buy gas, those companies have taken a stance against the United States. They are, very, they are every bit as much the enemy that you face in this war as it is with the Republican Party. And they've said, we're going to profit on your misery and we're going to do it intentionally. And unless there are price controls in the time of war, there's nothing you can do to stop us. We will gouge you. We won't give you any justification for the higher prices and we'll take your money and we'll put it in our bank. And that gouge is going to be ongoing. We'll raise the price to whatever we think is fair for us, not for you. Well, I, I think this is where, uh, with all the other things that President Biden has going on, I think that this is where he and his White House has to step in. And say, um, stop it. Nixon did it in 73, I think, wasn't it? 72 or 73 when he did the wage and price freeze. You guys are out of your minds. You're screwing the nation. We're going to stop you. Right. We're going to be stopped now. And here's the new price. Right. This is what it is. This you keep producing. If not, we'll put we'll put the war uh, uh, the war production act into effect, and we'll and take we'll the oil. Essentially, nationalize the oil companies for a period of time. Yes, because uh, they can't be because they can't be trusted to police themselves. Right, because it's it, you know and listen, millions of people, uh, the conspiracy theorists, and I heard a great conspiracy. I'll tell you in a minute that I did that now. Is, is, is even crazier, is even wackier. But you, you have to do something. You have to get this under control. Even if you have to open up the Keystone Pipeline again and, and let oil flow from, from well, that. Well, pipe, that pipeline's not in existence. It's not complete. You can't, it's, not, it's not turned off to the point where they can just turn it on and make it go again. Yeah. It's damaged beyond repair, and it's never going to run again. What they have to do is open up the... the, the uh, the six, the seven hundred billion gallons that they have in in storage for emergency right, reserve, which I believe they've done some already, right? Well, they haven't done it enough, so it's changed the price. It hasn't changed the price a penny. Well, I remember that 
that reading somewhere this weekend that even if they let all of the reserve out, it still wouldn't lower the price of gasoline. Because uh, and, of, because of some weird theory that they said we're gonna we've set about to gouge you, so it doesn't matter what you do after this. All you have to do is just shut up and buy gasoline. Okay, I think that could be it. I think that could be it. I want um, you to understand. You got two things to do. First, shut up. Second, buy our gasoline. That's it. Yeah, and we're and, and listen, they're taking and and listen. These people are uh, the oil companies are not your friends. They can. No. Uh, they can put out all of the friendly commercials on Meet the Press and all this other stuff that they want, but the reality is they're not here to help us. And now they've proven they're not even your countrymen. They don't care. And and it, and it really is, is ridiculous what they're doing. It's horrifying that they would do it because they know that if you... It, they know, in essence, that people, the more they raise the price of gas, the harder they're going to make it on people, but the harder they're also going to make it on people to support the, the Ukraine and the people that are fighting over there. And Vinny, this thing is going to go on who knows how long and who knows where it's going to end up. And that means that we can't trust them to help the nation. We can trust them to hurt the nation. And if, if, if they can't be trusted to not be an enemy of the state, then we're, they're going to have to be stopped. And well, that's, that's something they're setting themselves up for right now. If they want to, if they want to see what it looks like to have uh, a nationalized gas company with one name, you know, US Gas, no yeah. more Exxon, no more Shell. That'll be the end of that. You, you, guys, you guys had your shot and you ruined it. Well, you know, one of my theories is, and I, listen, I don't claim to be an expert on any of this stuff, but one of my theories is, is they know that their time is limited. The oil yeah. companies know Here come that, electric cars. that with electric cars and everything, they're going to have to make a move from uh, fossil fuels to electricity, or they're going to not be around, you know, for much longer than 30 or 40 years. So they're long range. And these people are planning 40, 50 years ahead. You can see that Shell over in England just converted a gas station to all electric charging stations. Um, but I don't think they make the money off of that, that they're going to make off of oil. And they don't mm. have the control because they have to go to somebody else to buy the electric. That's right. They don't have any electricity to sell you, do they? No. They have they electricity to give you in the, in the charger, but they, they, they don't control the, the source. They're, they're basically becoming a vending machine for the electric companies. By the way, this this has crossed my mind yesterday. When I buy an electric car, how do I get my? Do, do, does the charger come with it, or is the charger extra? You have to buy it. Well, there's a there's a cord that comes with it that you can plug it into your house, uh, your one ten or your two twenty, and that'll charge the car slowly. If you want the bigger charger, you can buy one, put it in your garage, and that'll charge your car. Uh, it's a DC char charger. So it'll charge your battery quicker. But is it part of the package or is that aftermarket? No, that's aftermarket. You gotta pay, you gotta pay extra for that. But what that does is it releases you from having to go to charging stations all the time to charge your car unless you're far away. If you, what am I going to charging? Do you have to go to charging school? <laughs> so, uh, so, you know, you know, some people somebody, have trouble with gas. You really do, in a way, have to go to charging school. You really, because you have to learn the differences in the batteries. You have to learn the differences in the chargers. You have to learn which chargers to use, which chargers not to use, which chargers take longer, uh, which, you know, be, because right now we're running with three or four or five different systems. Of course. There's Chadmo. There's, uh, you notice how Chad worked his way in there. There's Chadmo. There's Momo. There's Scomo. I mean, you know, there's, there's like four or five different uh, configurations. And every time they can fit, you know, every time you, you you go out to charge, you run into some charges that will it'll take, you know, five hours to charge your car. Some charges will charge your car in 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Some charges will give you enough to go a hundred miles. And then you know, you can go and go on to your destination or to the next charger. Because it's great if you have all night to charge your car, but if you want to charge and keep going, you want it to charge now. Well, then that's why you have to you have to um you have to find the like uh, Electrify America chargers, which are the big chargers. 
or the charge point charges, which are the big DC charges, and the DC charges the battery. Now, the Ford Mustang I was driving a couple of um, weeks ago had a great feature in it. As you went on the, on the, well, besides the feature that you could draw on, which I thought was the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those, it's like a scratch pad. Who cares about traffic? I'm doing my art. I'm, uh, taking, a, I'm taking the notes. I'm, yeah. <laughs> write um, it down so I don't forget it. There's another great feature on this thing that you put in your route that you're going to go, and it will figure out your route and tell you where the charging stations are. There you go. On the route. How many miles you can, you know, when exactly you can, uh, how much you need to charge to go either to your destination or to your next thing and do that. And then it'll, it'll basically plan out your route for klutzes like me who aren't good at doing that kind of thing. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the most organized person in the world. So all of a sudden I'm panicking looking for a charging station because I'm down to like five miles. I hope they found a way to update that program so the, 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 the locale of the charging station stays, stays current. Oh, yeah. No joke intended there, right? Who should have been, but I know I, I did that without knowing what I was saying. There you go. We got to get a rip shot. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we uh, bring in now a friend of ours who uh, I, I don't know how exactly you would... Um, you would uh, introduce this guy, except to say, he's just one of the coolest people in the world. Uh, or at least I think he is. What would you say, Michael? Well, I, I see his name. I don't yes, see I him. see his name. Oh! There he is. There he is. Oh, hey, 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 all the time. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Hey, good morning, Rod. Rod Eric, morning, everyone. what's happening? How you doing, fellas? Doing good, good man. Right How are you? And I'm I'm uh, I'm really good. I'm happy to be alive, man. You know, I got the uh, I got the post chemo and uh, cancer look going. But yeah. uh, I'll, well, I'll take my I'll take my hair the way it is to be here, man. Absolutely. Well, we're we're uh, with you on your fight, and you're doing a good job. Thanks, Rod. Damn glad. Yeah, so you're, man. Yeah. Are you healthy? I mean, are you you know how? Are so you far, feeling? man. So far, clean scan. So far, everything okay. good. Well, yeah. that, that's one of the questions I wanted to ask you, but the one that I need to know is, do you still have the white jockey in front of your house? <laughs> <laughs> that got kidnapped and taken down to Kelso Longview. Oh, where no. Where they kept it. Where, yeah. where, wow. <laughs> a perfect place. Where they kept I'm not going to say anything. but a <laughs> that, That's right. Well, I had my rural fans. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, just periodically, it's nice to know there's a little white guy on your lawn, and I have that in my mind. So, in my imagination, he he uh, he shall always be there. Oh man, I can dig it, man. That's how bad. you feeling, Michael? I'm feeling good, thank you. I'm, I'm uh, here in Pasadena, California. Haven't seen you in a while. Haven't been uh, back in Washington for a number of years, but uh, everything's fine down here. Wow, Pasadena. Okay. Yeah. Good on you, man. Right. Where, Hollywood, Mike. Where, where, there's a certain level of panic that sweeps through the town if the temperature gets to like 68 degrees. So oh. we're, right, we're right on the edge of civilization when it, when it dips into the 50s like we've had for the couple of weeks. You know, civilization stops as we know it. There can be a oh. war, there, there can be a pandemic, but if the temperature cools off below 58 degrees, we have serious social problems here that, that cannot be addressed easily. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse, it's worse it's, when it gets to 68 <laughs> it's worse than, it's worse than driving in the rain oh incredible <laughs> uh, yeah when, when it gets to 68 here people start going nuts i mean it's foggy here this morning and you would think that uh i, I mean people are banging into each other all over the place in fog it's amazing but they're in still the talking about the at? sun breaks where you at vinnie edmonds Edmonds. Oh, okay. So you are in, it's an Edmonds kind of day. It's foggy. Yeah. I, well, it's, you know, they have the, uh, it's the convergence zone here. So it's always gray or usually gray in the morning. I mean, you know, it's funny. I, I was in California last week and I got up, you know, the sun actually comes up and it's out <laughs> and I'm looking up and I'm going, holy crap, what the hell is this? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm conditioned to it, you know? We, we, those, have, we, we have a lot of problems, but one of the things we've agreed on is that the sun must come up. And we must be able to see it or else we can't, we just can't get to where we're going or do what, we, what needs to be done. We, we can't function as basic humans. Californians have a lot of weaknesses. It's just built right into the system. If the sun doesn't come up, we do not operate well. Yeah, man. No, I spent enough time down there, Michael. I know exactly what you're talking about. 
And I miss those foggy mornings in Santa Barbara where about three o'clock you would finally see the sun come out. Well, you know, and you know, in California, there's going to be what they call the burn off. Going to be the burn off, yeah. man. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Now we off. just have a we just what we need for the rest of the world. We need a bit of a burn off and the sun to come out. And that's, well, I think yeah, yeah. Speaking of the rest of the world, and that's not going to happen for a while. Yeah, that's what it's looking like, isn't it? It's just this really. Is, uh, this is looking. It's sad. What is, what is your state of mind in wartime, Rod? Depression. Yeah. Just because I, to quote the late Rodney King, why can't we all just get along? Because some of us are pigs. Some of us need more. Some of us have everything and still want to feel like they, it's not enough. There's that, there's that, you know, there's, we've, we've talked about brain stems many times before. And yes, we that have. One, you know, there's that <laughs> one piece of the brain stem is, is for sex and the other piece <laughs> of the brain stem that's for, uh, that's for wealth. And those yeah. two in some people, some men, especially can All never wound get up. enough. You know, you see it with guys like Jeffrey Epstein and, and, and Donald Trump. You can't get enough. You can't fill it. You can't satiate it. And yeah. Putin seems to be one of those guys that you could you could give him everything and he's still going to want more because he there's no it's like me and eating. I mean, you know, I, 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 I can, you know, you know, I, I mean, it, it's, it's sad, but it happens. <laughs> What can you eat? Finish that sentence. I, I, I mean, I can eat like you know, a whole, a whole tray of lasagna. You know, because yeah. it's so good and it gives you such a feeling inside that you're like, oh yeah, a chocolate cake. I mean, we all get it to a little degree. Oh, there are God. certain powerful people in this world that have it, and they're they're, they're hell bent on getting as much as they can. My latest thing is vanilla scones from Trader Joe's. These are deadly. The government oh, should step in. Oh, through. that looks deadly, man. Yeah, yeah, before, we, be, before we get into fixing the gas prices of the world, we have to stop Trader Joe's from making those vanilla scones. There's something really wrong with the world when they can sell those right over the counter. That's a beautiful thing. Right over the counter? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, those uh, in, uh, the black and white cookies. You know, I was telling Vinny last week that I wanted to go cover the war. That I wanted to, and I couldn't figure out where to work out of the guys that are working inside the country that are in Ukraine reporting from the veranda of their of their about to be shelled hotel. That yeah. is going. That's not going to work in another week. So I think we should set up or, uh, uh, our offices for feeding the world news from the from the war zone from from uh, Warsaw, because Poland's becoming the, the the focus of the of the of the resurgence of the war. Our jet planes are going to have to cross the border from Poland. Our, our stinger missiles and the over-the-shoulder firing and all the guns and all the food and medicine that's coming, it goes over the border from Poland. They can't control that border. And that's going to get Poland into it. And so that's where the war is going to be fighting. That'll be the first place that Putin crosses over into uh, NATO territory. So we've got to be working in Warsaw to cover that. That's action. World War III. I mean, that's, that, you got You it. think so? Oh, oh yeah, because we're obligated, if Poland gets attacked, One inch. we're obligated to defend them. He said it twice now, every single inch. So that means the first inch, you got to start. You got to. You better be ready to fight from the first inch, and that means you just, you got to see him coming. And that's the one thing yeah. the Russians don't have. They haven't got a road right now to the to the west. They haven't got a road to the Polish border, and that's why it's wide open. That's that's going to be their downfall. But uh, I can't tell. I can't tell you how quick it comes. Yeah, I hope it comes before that. You know, um, besides all of the war. And all of the other, the, the gas price and everything else. We lost a good guy last week. Um, I, I know that you, Michael, and you, Rod, knew uh, Jim Swanson, Swanee, uh, probably as well as uh, as anybody, especially you, Rod. I mean, you worked at uh, the Comedy Underground. I think you were like the house comedian there, weren't you? Well, certainly for uh, some of the activities, sports-related activities. Yeah, and where I, would, no fat where I would host. I think was you too, wasn't it? <laughs> Miss No Fat? yeah. Yeah, I was always hosting the Miss No Fab. Um, <laughs> Something else you listen, couldn't do today. <laughs> listen, man, um, that was really tough duty, but someone had to do it. I'm glad you stepped up, Rod, because we need. I had to, to step time. up, Michael. I had to step up, and let me tell you what was the funnest part about hosting the Miss No Fat. This was, of course, Swanee's idea of a beauty contest with the hottest waitresses from all of the Pioneer Square area restaurants and bars. Okay, however. What Swanee would do was he would have guys go out to different gentlemen's clubs 
to, pro to procure top of the line talent, which made the gals who were slinging hash and wiping tables down and once in a while doing you know a, a set of crunches kind of upset when they saw the talent that was coming in the room that it was equipped to among other things certainly ride up and down a pole yeah but so, which, which is harder than it looks I, I i it looks definitely uh tricky and uh <laughs> I it. <laughs> it, it, it looks tricky if so a gun to my but, head and slide up and down a pole you'd have to use the gun <laughs> <laughs> but uh that was that was one of the more infamous yearly events uh every uh every mardi gras was the miss no fat yeah and uh and i thoroughly enjoyed that i i thoroughly enjoyed the man uh and the reason that i thoroughly enjoyed jim swanson aka swanee was that he was a facilitator of a good time yeah that was really more than anything else his gift was getting people together um, eating and drinking and having a raucous good time. Yeah, some and people, some people have a gift for it. People, he knew how yeah. to put people together, man. He knew how to how to get people into his place. He knew how to promote his place. And, uh, you know, as an amateur baseball player, he was, he was very popular. He knew how to get the players into the place. He made mm -hmm. national news, I don't know, was it 90, 89, something like that, when he based his, uh, his bar uh, prices on Dave Valley's batting average. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that was, that was as cold a bowl of chili as anybody could ever serve my friend Dave Valley. Because you if, know, if, if anybody's going to take, Valley. that's a way to take an economic hit. I'm talking, I'm complaining about gas prices. Dave I'm Valley should have been complaining you, about that. Listen, I think, I think it was at one point, I think where they, uh, where the, where the well drinks 149 or something crazy. It, it was something. <laughs> I swear, Vinny, they were 149. And it, what was interesting Michael was that he would always change the price on the window, the front window. When you drove by Swanee's, you could see what the price of the well drink was going to be. Did and it change? Did painted it, sign. Would it, it change? It said, Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. It said. It said. It said. Uh, I think it said uh, Death Valley Days, and of course it was spelled V A L L E, and then it, and and it had you know what the price of the drink was for the day, which was literally his batting average. But would the price change during the evening? Like if Valley got a hit, would the price go up? I think that was the case, man. But, but I, I also think that if, if he was over at the plate, the price went down. I which like made that. the joint be jumping sometimes. Okay, right. He struck out. He struck out. <laughs> yeah. and, and besides, you know, and, and it was funny because, I mean, we knew about this now. We heard, you know, it was national news. We heard it in San Francisco. We heard it, I was down in San Francisco at the time when this was all happening. We knew about it. And, you know, it was, who is this guy, Dave Val? You know, I mean, geez, you know, and then, you know, you kind of did your research and you found out what it's, what his deal was. And it was, um, it, it was one of those things where now when I first got here, I remember going over there. People told me there's two places you got to go. You got to go to FX McCrory's and you got to go to Swanee's. If you want to, mm -hmm. if you want to see the baseball crowd and get to know the baseball crowd. So I went over to FX, I met Mick and talked to him. And then went over to Swanee's and wasn't Sw Swanee was not behind the bar, but he was out on the floor somewhere and I introduced myself to him. And I think the only time I ever paid for a drink in Swanee's was the first time when I walked in and walked up to the bar and bought a drink until the place changed hands. <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. he was that kind of guy. He knew the media in town. He knew how to keep them happy. He knew he knew the whole, the, the whole thing. He was a great public relations guy, you know. Yeah, he really was, was. A great guy, but Swanee was the nut, you know. Swanee yeah. was the crazy guy. Did the crazy stuff in his places. Yeah. What was he, what was he doing in recent years? Well, you know, he was over in Cleelum. I think he had had a stroke. He had some health issues, uh, and and I, I I know he had one stroke. And I saw him shortly thereafter. As a matter of fact, I saw him, Michael, just before I went in for my cancer treatment, man. And it was interesting. I met him at the new Comedy Underground, the one that's now closed now, the one that was moved over, that was formerly, I think, Phoenix Underground. Yeah. Anyway, uh, met him over there, along with a guy who wrote a book about him. Swanee was working the gate over in Cleelum at a resort. And the guy came through the gate and they had a conversation. And when the guy told him that he was an author, 
Swanee closed the gate and ran after his car and said, you need to write a book about me. And that's how the guy, oh yeah, you need to write a book about my life. And, uh, and he had the kind of life that merited a book, man. You know, he really did. Um, there's a Netflix documentary that showcases the skills of major or minor league baseball's one and perhaps only left-handed catcher. That would be Jim Swanson called the uh, battling bastards of baseball. Yeah. What's, the, what's the name again? It's called the battle. Is, is it, is it the battling bastards, yeah, yeah, of, battling baseball, bastards of baseball? Yeah. That's what like I the Portland, thought. Uh, that Portland, team. Portland Mavericks. Yeah. 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 It was about the Portland Mavericks team that was, uh, that was managed Were they managed by uh, Kurt Russell's dad. Uh, yes, I think they were. Yeah. I think they were managed yeah. by him and, and Kurt Russell was around for that, uh, for that, for that whole thing. He was a kid. I think he was a bad boy on that team. When he was I think he was a bad boy on the team. Kurt Russell was a bad boy on the team. Yeah. Yeah. It's a but, great documentary. Uh, if you get a chance to, to watch it on Netflix, battling bastards of baseball, you know, it just brought in people from all over the place. X -Men, it was like, it was if, if the, if the scene in blazing saddles with us, where they're lining up to, uh, take over the town <laughs> for baseball players, this would be what it is. You'd have the Nazis, you'd have the molesters, you'd have the, you know, the, the Pancho Villa and his gang, uh, you know, you'd have everybody. This was that line, that group in baseball. That's you know, quite a league where the Nazis play the molesters. You don't want to miss this <laughs> yeah. one. It's a double exactly. header. The Nazis are in town to play the molesters. You, you, <laughs> you're you're molesters going to want to see this. You know, it was one of the more amazing things when you walked into Swanee's was looking at some of the memorabilia behind the bars. There was the bats that were on that one wood wall. Yeah. Okay. There was all those bats. They were all nailed to the wall. That was just really an amazing collection of bats. But there was photos of different celebrities who had come to Swanee's. And among those, I'll never forget, was Billy Martin. Oh, Billy. Well, of course. He, the photograph. He went to all the bars. Photograph of Billy Martin. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But, um, yeah, I entertained Roger Clemens in there one night. It was kind of a who's who place, man. It became really a happening spot. And considering that it wasn't necessarily an attractive building, okay, it was kind of a divey bar, man, really. Um, but full of characters and a real character who ran the joint, man. So, so Benny, that's, that sets up a situation where if you're drunk and you cause a problem at Swanee's Bar, the, the bouncer chases you out with a Ted Klazuski signed bad. You don't want that. To, I don't exactly. ever want to have the, uh, the bouncer chase you out of Swanee's. Because I think the, the deal is in Seattle, if you got thrown out of Swanee's, boy, what the hell did you do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Angel fan. Yeah. yeah, exactly, Benny. I, it, exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, it was now the last time I saw him, he was running a jean store on like Aurora Avenue or something like that. Uh, you know, Dungaree store. Swanee was? I was passing and I saw him standing in the doorway and pulled over and talked to him for a couple of minutes. And that was the last, that was years and years. As a matter of fact, it's probably before I left for Pittsburgh. Yeah. And that that was, that had to be uh, 20, 2009, 2010, something like that. When I was, uh, and the by the way, the Steelers are still the team in the NFL who, who do not have a quarterback. They're going to try this thing with ten men is plenty. That's going to be their new motto. Need a quarterback. Oh, yeah. yeah, ten they is enough. That's one opinion. They don't. Nah, they, listen. They don't need a quarterback. They got that. You know, it's it. You 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 heard about the double option. You heard about the wildcat. Mike Tomlin is going to be running the double option wildcat mother. <laughs> just a series, a series of direct snaps. <laughs> You're gonna get it snapped to the coach, and the coach is gonna. <laughs> the coach will come up with something. Well, Pittsburgh is also one of those Russell Wilson destination rumors as well. I heard that one, and I, I just couldn't anywhere. believe it. He, of know, course, he's not going anywhere. Every you know, all these media guys today. Not that we didn't do it, but I don't think we did it. You, you have to drum up some kind of something controversy off off season storylines in addition right. to when Aaron Rodgers is going to decide he's going to stay in and play in Green Bay right it looks, it looks like he's going to stay I didn't I didn't think he was going to stay but now it looks like he is yeah me. I think so too and, and then the problem also is is you'll have some some guy on Twitter now who will who you don't really know who, who knows who this guy is and he'll put up oh Russell Wilson says that he wants to get traded you know well who is that you know but people don't take the time to like look at 
who it is that's saying this. They just look at the tweet and they get on Facebook and say, oh, my God, Russell Wilson is gone. How do you? And then, you know, the, the, most of the people on the television uh, sports, they look at it and go, boing, 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 boing. Will Russell Wilson get, tra-? you know, I mean, it's it's so ridiculous today. I, 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 um, I like doing cars a lot. <laughs> yeah, I really do. and now and now that they're going to have the designated hitter in the freaking National League, are you kidding me? Yeah. Uh, by the way, when are they going to settle that badness? I don't think they're going to sell it for a while, Rod. I no. think they're Doesn't really look good. Doesn't look good. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Wow, know. you mean to tell me that these greedy owners are going to let this whole thing play out and once again? even though they've decided that it's okay for the players to use steroids and they're not going to test them at the same time, by the way, that they decided that Bonds and Clemens were not eligible for the Hall of Fame in their 10th and final year of eligibility. What a crock of doo-doo. When are they going to get their policy on cannabis right? They can't quite figure out what to do with that. Of course, oh, they still can, haven't not, figured that out yet either, huh? Well, well, neither can Brittany Greiner, not to, to, to use an oh, example. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. What You know what? Did she you really did she really take hash oil to Moscow? Well, she took CBD was, oil, yeah. Yeah, but she's been yeah, playing and she's I, been playing I, in Russia I, for years. She should know yeah, better. Yeah, she's been playing there for years. I mean, you want to talk about ought to know better, you know, and given given the political climate right now, she's that's a, a hell of a bargaining chip right there. That's a six foot eleven bargaining chip, isn't it? Or six foot what is she? How tall you is she? You know, I saw her practicing the sky hook with Kareem Abdul Jabbar on tape yesterday, and she's she's not three inches shorter than he is. She's more like four or five inches shorter. So I don't, however tall she is, he's, he's grown. pretty damn tall though. He must have been growing. He's still a growing boy because he looked like he was seven three compared to her height. Practicing wow. sky hooks on the court. Yeah, but but you know, here's the thing. If there's no conflict going on, they're probably not looking at it, you know. But she should have been smart enough to figure out, you know what? Maybe I can get along on this flight without the hash oil. You know, maybe I can maybe I can get along on this flight until I get out of here and get back to the United States where I can get all I want. Maybe I'll just leave this in the, uh, in the garbage. I, you know, I, just, uh, it you seems, know. Don't you think, don't you think she took it in and then forgot? Or? I think she took it in. I, she Moscow took it doesn't in. seem like the kind of place that you could score hash or. Oh no, I no, think plus. she took it in. Yeah. Because she, I think she was in before this all started. Wasn't she? Yeah. February is when she yeah. got popped. Yeah. Yeah. I think she was in before this all happened, but once this happened, you know, somebody, her manager, her friend, her mother, her father, somebody should have gotten to her and said, listen, last thing you want to do is have anything illegal on you right now. Mm-hmm. And that's illegal yeah. here. Get rid of it. Go bury it. Go stick it in a dumpster somewhere. That's it. That's all. She's facing yeah. a hell of a problem right now. You yeah. think, and, Michael? Yeah. Ten years. Well, Ouch. I, I don't think they'll... I did, I, I, did, I did see that. I. You don't think there's some kind of a... Uh, a way that uh, they can work that out from a, uh, a negotiation well, standpoint. It's not a real good time for diplomacy between the U.S. and Russia. I'll say that. Yeah, that's yeah. I know. Given the given the the timing on everything, it, it couldn't be worse. Couldn't well, be worse. The thing you have to think about though is that Putin wants things to appear normal to the people that are there, even though they're they're more and more finding out what's really going on through social media and so on and so forth. If you live in Russia, you know there's a war going on, but you don't think it's that you're invading somebody, you're defending somebody. Mm-hmm. And if this goes to a, a, a conclusion where she goes to jail for 10 years or something like that, it's not going to seem normal to them. And yeah, but they'll never know about it. Well, but this, but they will. There's ways to see see. You know, now with social media, news gets around. It's not like you can control everything anymore. You know, you can still, there's still enough of social media, of different platforms to get out there that people know about this stuff. Yeah. And if the women basketball, if she gets, let's say they give her five each, okay? The women basketball players are almost definitely going to say, okay, no more Russian basketball. We don't care how much you pay us. We're not going to Russia. We're not, we're getting yeah. out. We're not coming back. Well, people are going to start to say, well, what the hell? How, how come there's no U.S. stars or, or, or international stars want to come to, to Russia and play? Somebody's going to find out something. And it, I think it'll, it'll, it'll blow up. So it's in their interest, really. Detain her, keep her a while, make your point, 
and let it go. She plays for a team called UMMC Ekaterinburg. Yeah, I, I had that. My doctor while. said I had that at one time. And the funny thing is, apparently, they pay more than the WNBA. She oh, makes yeah. $1.5 million. And her salary was $1.5 mil. Well, the oligarchs. Is that it, crazy? It, well, I hope she saved yeah. her money. She's going to need a good lawyer. She's going to need a hell of a good lawyer, isn't she? And he's going well, to have to be bilingual. Yeah, she, well, yeah. Gonna, she's probably, I'm, I'm sure she's going to get the best lawyer. I'm sure that they're, uh, when it's all over, I think it's, you know, that the, the, they'll say, all right, you know, go get the hell out of here. Don't ever, we'll ban you from Russia for the rest of your life or something like that. And she'll go, thanks. I didn't really want to come back here anyway. That forced shit is like, you know. <laughs> you know, the, the, for the most part, the world's athletes have supported the Ukrainians. But over the weekend, the other side of this uh, coin got turned when a Russian gymnast wore a Z on his singlet, which is uh, the letter that the, that the Russian guys put on the, the, the Z, the letter that the Russian soldiers put on their trucks so they know one truck from another. And the Z has become oh. a letter of support for the Russian war effort. And oh, whoa. the kid that was uh, competing, his name is Ivan Kuliak, got the bronze in. Uh, Gym, in the in gymnast competition in uh, Qatar, Duma, Qatar. The kid that got the gold was Ukrainian and he didn't say anything, but it was the, the, the sore Russian that came in third place for the bronze that put the Z on his <laughs> singlet saying, I hope that they let me back into the country. I'm a yay, yay Putin. I can't, I can't, I can't vault worth a shit. Yeah. 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 I'm with Putin. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Putin, and that's why I got third. Well, probably what he did is he went back to his hotel room and he turned on Fox, and you know, which has now become the Russian, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the Russian broadcasting network. There you go. Yeah, isn't that something, man? Things are different, Rod. It's really crazy. They're very different, the aren't they? Changed. They're very different, man. They're very different. When you can see a Fox News host on Russian television. And they're using what Absolutely. he's saying as a soundbite. Yeah, we're working on working on behalf of the enemy. Working on behalf of the enemy, man. That's really Joe. I'm I, I, I'm telling you, fellas, Joe McCarthy has got to be belly flopping in his whiskey scented coffin. <laughs> and he, first, he'll have a couple of drinks, then he'll belly flop. Then yeah, he'll belly uh, flop. Uh, Reagan belly flopping, Goldwater belly flopping, Nixon yeah. belly flopping, they're all belly flopping. Well, you don't recognize they can't believe this. Yeah, I mean it's, you can't recognize the Republican Party these days. I mean it's it's a it's a bunch of uh psychos. You know, yeah. it's, like, it's like everybody who who finally got off of uh got off of Angel Dust decided to join one party, you know. Angel Dust mm -hmm. gives drugs a bad name. Let's be fair about that. <laughs> this is true. But they exactly. just, I mean, you just look at them and you, and you go to yourself, my God, I mean, what's wrong with these people? Well, they're willing collaborators. Nobody's making a Republican take these extraordinary stances. They're doing it willingly. They're doing yep. it on, they're doing it for self-aggrandizement and for, for the feeling that it gives them. And, and of course, if you're a Republican politician, you do it for support from Trump, who's without whose money and support from his backers, you'll never win. So you have to collaborate. You have to willingly sell your soul before you even take the first step. I, I have this vision in my mind, and and you guys may tell me I'm crazy, but I'm, I'm thinking that the world court in The Hague in a couple of years, will for, will, will, they'll be sitting outside, it'll be the war, war crimes tribunal, and you'll have Trump inside being tried for something, and then Putin sitting in a bench outside waiting to go in to be tried for something after Trump is found guilty. You know, like, and, and they can lock them both in a cell together where they can screw each other for the rest of their lives. I want them in Epstein's cell, Jeff, 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 Jeffrey Epstein's. Those cells are empty. His cell is available. Let's put somebody useful in there. That's a special cell, isn't it? It's yeah. a wonderful cell. Yeah, that's a very that's special cell. cell. It's, where, it's where justice lingers in the shadows. Yeah, and he and, and you know, and it was it was interesting that he uh, committed suicide. It was interesting he committed suicide. Su su <laughs> it's interesting that he, that he died. He died. Yeah. He died. Sewer pipes. He died. He died. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rod, I was I was telling Benny that I remembered one of your jokes that has no meaning anymore because of the way times and people have changed. And I remember you were up on the dais 
and uh, Randy Johnson was next to you on the thing. You, your joke was not about Randy Johnson, but you talked about getting a haircut on Capitol Hill. And you said, the guy yes. sat down in the chair and he just said, just fuck it up. <laughs> please, yes, please. Yeah, please. Exactly, yeah. Hi. Now that, that yes. joke no longer has any meaning because people walk around with fucked up haircuts all the time. And it's become, all the time. It has become commonplace to the point where fuck it up has no meaning. Yep, exactly. You know, I happened to be flipping around the dial last <laughs> night on my way to the 90 day fiance the other way. Oh, God. And <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Stop it, Vinny. Stop, and I happen man. to catch Trey Gowdy Stop. America. America Trey tonight. Man. Now, you want to talk about haircuts. There's a guy with a scary haircut. He's Who's that? Trey Gowdy. Remember oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. He, that's a scary looking dude. I mean, he looks like he's like ready for war. You know? Okay. I, I don't yep. know. His whole, I, I know his whole story. And he's, he's, you know, ultra right wing and yada, yada. But, man, he just, you couldn't look at him. He didn't look like he was him. He looked like he was like a, an anim animatron or something like that. Like, oh my God, just, you know, invest in a barber, pal. Uh, you, know, but, <laughs> you know, go get yourself, go to the barber college. What he happened to hair and makeup? A haircut there for, you know, three yeah, or four man. bucks. Whatever happened to Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. Whatever happened to those good old days? <sighs> you, when you were dealing with a professional in the hair and makeup department. Exactly. <laughs> A trained <laughs> professional. Hey, I remember the days of TV when they had like professional makeup, you know, makeup people in the station. You know, the news people get. I know. Down. Now they hand you, here's five dollars. Go get yourself a thing of Mac and put it on yourself. You know? <laughs> Although I looked good in Mac. You good in Mac? No, <laughs> <laughs> so Rod. What are you doing these days, man? Are you just like chilling at home and just. Uh, yeah, I got some gigs coming up. Uh, uh, I'm doing a cancer, uh, a, a show for uh, Saint uh, uh, Sacred Heart Hospital in Spokane. It's a children's hospital oh, for yeah. kids with cancer. And uh, doing a benefit over there uh, next month, the 20th of, of uh, April, at the uh, Bing Crosby Theater there in Spokane. Oh, yeah, yeah. Along with very funny man Jeff Young and uh, Nick Tyson who will be, I think, hosting the show, and Don Parkinson who will be doing a guest set. Those are both Spokane acts, very popular in Spokane, and work all over the Northwest. And these are guys that I've known for years. Yeah. And uh, I have a great affinity for that town. I, I, I still remember the first time I went there and they had a black mayor. I, I never forget, I was just stunned to be that far east and to see a town like Spokane that had actually elected a black mayor. And I remember that one of my bits because there was a black kid who was on a billboard advertising a soft drink. I think I said it was nice to see that the mayor's kid got work freelance and doing <laughs> billboards around town. I still remember that. But uh, I've always had a great time over there, man. And I know it's cougar country. And I know they really, you know, aren't big fans of Seattle. And I'm sure I'm going into a place that's literally dripping with COVID because ain't nobody was <laughs> masking up. And mm -hmm. Perhaps you know the, the percentage of people who are vaccinated might not be that high, but maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. I hope probably I'm wrong. Better, probably better in Spokane if you went over to Coeur d'Alene. I mean, I, I have a, a, a really my, one of my best friends lives in Spokane, and so I've traveled over there a bunch of times, even since I've been back. And uh, more masks in Spokane, and if you go over to Coeur d'Alene, I mean, it's just like nobody wearing a mask in Idaho. Well, you times have changed. Times have changed to the to uh, Eastern Washington to the point where you say, "Should we stop and watch Tucker?" And the answer is always, "No, you do not stop and watch Tucker." Yeah, take well, food I, with take take food with you. Have supplies. Don't don't be victimized yeah. on the road. Yeah, exactly, man. You got to help the local economies. I mean, if you can't stop and zip driving, uh, you know, off of I ninety, <laughs> what where the hell can you stop? If you can't take a few minutes in Othello to look around at the railroad tracks. If you can't stop in the Davenport riding Route 2 out there, what the, what do you got in life, pal? I'll well, tell you gonna... what, man. There's a place in Cleelum that does jerky. Turkey jerky and beef jerky. Right across from it, the bakery, right? Absolutely. I know the place you're talking and about. It's, yeah, it's and, and people drive from Seattle over there just to get the jerky. They walk from yeah, Ellensburg. Just, yeah, yeah. That too. I was, but, yeah, Clee, Elm, Clee Elm's a trip. I like driving it. When I drive the cars, I drive sometimes out there and go to the Clee Elm Bakery or I've gone to that. Uh, what is that? It's, it's some kind of meats or something like that. But Satriali's. 
No, it's, it's definitely not Satrialis. You don't get fingernails in that stuff. You buy, you know, you get pork <laughs> back in Satrialis. You run the risk of getting a, a pinky ring or a fingernail in it. I'll take the pinky ring. I had the fingernail last time. Yeah, man. I'm down By the way, whoever's whoever's back. nail it was, they had they had their nails done recently before you they know, were wet. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah. not the nail it'll get you; it's the polish on top. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Um, so, so, are you guys doing this every week, man? Are you guys? Do you guys do a, a, a Monday, podcast? Every Wednesday week? and Friday we do it. Yeah. Really good on you guys, and you just yeah, discuss everything since, to... uh, since the start of the pandemic. We did it kind of entertain people who were stuck in a house. We've been doing and, it almost two years. So, when, when when are we coming up to our two year anniversary? I'd have to look, but it's not going to be too long from now. I think we started. Well, the pandemic started in March. Well, we started before we started that. To do this in. April, yeah, March, March 15th, uh, 13th, I think was, yeah, we're coming up on the pandemic uh, anniversary. Uh, we've, we, we've, sold, we've sold out a lot of garbage. We've taken out a lot of garbage since we started this, Rod. Uh, Donald yeah. Trump oh, among you. them. Now we got Putin. So we, we've had, we had the, uh, the, the idiots with the uh, vaccination police. The so we've had we've had, we had we've had a lot of hurdles to get over, but we've managed. Oh, to get this far. I just uh, there's there's obviously so much always to unpack. Yeah, and for and... us, I mean, let's face it, Rod. For us, it's a therapy session. I mean, if we didn't do this, we'd be screaming at somebody that we knew. You know, yeah. like 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 in person. You know, you couldn't go to Starbucks and 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 scream at anybody. You couldn't go anywhere. So we we came up with this, and people listen. And, uh, you know, hopefully they get something out of it. We put them all up on YouTube. Uh, we've got some great stuff. We're hoping that some program director in town hears it and says, hey, you know what? Who knows? Maybe we need these guys back again. I, uh, you know, um, I had Wouldn't that be nice? The return of, the, return of uh, the Cisco kid and his two amigos. <laughs> well, you know, it, it was interesting. I pitched KJR. You know, they took over that second signal at 1090. And I said to them, why don't you do KJR Classic and put everybody who was on in the old days, even if you don't do it every day, mm -hmm. put, you know, put Mikey and me, put, well, they won't go near Mitch, but, um, you know, they, he rubbed them the wrong way. Uh <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, that gave me the shivers. That gave me, me too, the Michael. shivers. Me too. Me too, man. <laughs> I should say he got rubbed the wrong way. Uh, yeah. I, but, I, I, I can't help but to think of that line. How much for a rub and a tug? I love that line. <laughs> hey, but you know what? To his credit, to his credit, he's doing his podcast and he's, you know, I'm, I mean, he, I think he's doing well with it. So, you know, from the ashes of a career came something, you know, I mean, he's a talented guy. So why talented not? Talented guy, man. Good on yeah. him. Yeah, I'm glad yes, to see. I'm, we all make mistakes sometimes yeah. in the presence of female companionship. You yeah, know. sometimes. And listen, let's face it: if, five cam, if, five camera video coverage. If this was in exactly. the days of Wayne Cody, nobody give it a second thought. Yeah, you know? I know. Isn't but that now the truth? we're in a, a whole different, different whole different situation. climate, Vinny. Yeah. So, and so, some people have a personality where the, your, your, the people who love you want you to be bad. They want yeah. they want you to gamble. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. oh, there's, yeah, there's certain, yeah. I mean, you can't, well, I don't know, I'm not going to speculate on what, what Clear Channel wanted to do, but you just, you just say to yourself, uh, if, if you're making a lot of money in this business, beware, be very, very aware. Because, You'll find a way to cut costs. Yeah, because, yeah, it's not interesting. Now, I mean, that's, you know, that's what happened to me in, in Pittsburgh. You know what I mean? All of a sudden, boom. You know, really, you're making you're making good money. We don't have to, you know, we can put somebody in for you that um, makes half the money. It'll work seven days a week. You know, when you say, "Gee, you know, I really want to work five. You know, mm -hmm. so I, you know, it's a crazy business. But thank God, the people like us don't go away anymore. Now we we get a YouTube channel, or we get a get on Facebook. And we, uh, we, we continue to exist and for the people who want to enjoy us and listen to us. And we get quite a few from across the country. It's interesting. We get people, you know, because they got a, a, a following in Pittsburgh, too. So we get people in Pittsburgh, L.A., San Francisco, Seattle. It's better uh, if they don't know us from radio. They like, yeah. they like it better. Yeah. You guys, were you guys better on radio or are you better now? Oh, we're better now. 
Well, yeah, like much better. Now. Yeah. Yeah, much better now, uh, Michael. I'm a witness. <laughs> We've even invented our own country. Exactly. Chipotle. <laughs> Spokakia. And, and we're sending people to Ukraine. We're sending them there. They're happy. We, we, we deal directly across the Spokakian border with anyone, especially Ukrainians. They, yeah, we're, there you uh, go. Yeah, we're, you, we've already you, shot you a, a 67 Jeep pickup with a rifle case <laughs> in the back. And uh, a, what else? We, oh, we had uh, two gremlins that we got running. And With we mounted caliber. guns on top of them and sent them over. So basically, the entire Spopakia army is uh, lending aid, comfort, and uh, and whatever to the uh, Ukrainians right now. When you put there a fifty you caliber, we put a fifty caliber gun on a gremlin that rolls over like a sow bug with each, with each shot it's got it, it takes the recoil perfectly the, no who knew that the design was so beautifully put together well you it sounds seen like it's when, a perfect war machine man you should have seen it when it rolled over and it was shooting and the gremlin was just spinning as the bullets were coming out under the roof yep. <laughs> i'll tell you those gremlins never look better Ever. Look, they have a great okay. physical education program in Shpopakia. It just took three students to go out there, skip over the bullets, and turn the gremlin back around. And it was on its way to help. On its people. way? Yeah. And it's, and it's painted up in Seahawk green. So it's perfectly camouflaged. Yeah, with the number 12 underneath. That. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. There all you all, go. All the, all the equipment we're sending has the number 12 on the side. Confused the go. crap out of the Russians. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, 12 there, 12 there, 12 there. <laughs> and the, the Spopakians are neutral at this time, but they're, 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 their mind is made up about what side they're on. They're right. on they're the side of Spopakia. Not, they're in neutral. They're trying not to go in reverse. Yeah, man. No, there's, you know, by the way, the, uh, the still photograph of the old woman who was preparing Molotov cocktails. Yes. Yeah. Was, was, was a heartwarming war photograph. If Anybody I've can seen one. Yeah, Look like somebody's who, grandmother, you know, just stuffing rags in those bottles of gas. Just yeah, that's the kind of you know, you know, they must have learned from like the students for a democratic society or something like the SDS people probably. Jerry Rubin's probably over there showing them. Hey, here's how you do it, you know. Here's how you do it. Yeah, Abby Hoffman probably over there, you know, in spirit showing them how to do it. But, here's yeah. here's how we blew up a townhouse in village in Greenwich Village. The damn thing's exactly. gone in a whiff. You can do the yep. same thing. You can do the same thing right there in Kiev. As a matter of fact, the Shpopakian Library has just sent them 30,000 copies of Steal This Book. <laughs> Signed. Signed. Signed by Abby yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Right, I hope you'll come on with us again sometime soon, man. It's, it's, it's Guys. good to see your face. It's good to see that you're healthy, man. Yeah, feeling good, man. Feeling good, guys. I really, I am. And, and uh, both you guys look well, man. I'm we, telling insist, you, I, I, we insist that you live forever. Yes. Well, you know, vice versa, my friend. Yeah. Okay. Really. I, I, by the way, Michael, I'm digging your baseball cap, man. I like that. You know, I, uh, my friend, yeah. My, I got, got a, some, I got a well. team. I just can't get them on the field. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, you think that's going to last a while? Huh? You guys think that baseball thing is going to last a while? Yeah, I think it's going to, man. I think it's, uh, I, I mean. They've had every opportunity to come to an agreement. Yeah. They, yeah, they really did. They could have done this a week ago Monday. They don't like each other. They, don't mean, like they really me. don't like each other, do they? No, no. Yeah, they really don't like me. You know, Bud, Bud Selig, they didn't like, but they put up with him because really he loved the game. Right. Uh, and, and it was a lot. I, I think ultimately they thought that what he was trying to do was to help the game. The things that Manfred is doing doesn't, uh, doesn't show me he loves the game at all. He's just a, he's a pawn, a puppet. Uh, of course. And and I just don't see anything he's done. I mean, that crap the last two years about putting a runner on second base in the extra innings. Yeah. Michael and I came up with a great plan for that, though. We said what they should have done would have made it very palatable is they should have taken the oldest player retired from that team and put him on second base. <laughs> so could you imagine like Junior out there? You know, he's like, what, what is he, 52 now, 50, you know, and they, they yeah, got him out in uniform. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got to run from, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, man. And you know, it, has to be, it has to be a surprise, like it's a special guest. And taking second base is the body of Don Zimmer. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Right, I love it, that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's if, if they did that, I would say, well, you know, you got something here. You know, maybe you got something here. But the whole thing about putting a runner at second, this is not like softball. Yeah, our designated runner tonight is Red Shane Deans. Yes, Back here, hasn't played since in all his glory. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. in all his glory. Please, well, you know, you know what's crazy too, man. I, I got to say to this, guys, as a Mariner fan, just how disappointed I am that they haven't come to any kind of an agreement because what this really does is spoils, I think, the Mariners' plans for some more free agent acquisitions. I don't know how all of that's going to work out once they finally do come up with a deal. There's going to be so much bad blood on the on the water with these guys. And it's you know, Rod, I, to make it even worse, they just slapped the, just this weekend. They they said you can't even scout the other teams. You can't watch either. You can't watch them play. You can't make determinations on somebody's value. You can't look at another player. You can't say which pitchers are the best ones, which ones are the which infielders are available, which young guys coming up should we be looking at? They can't even look at these players or watch them. Well, oh, they really don't like each other, do they? No. But you know what the great thing is, Rod? <laughs> it's the great equalizer, man. Once they sign the papers, the checks will start flowing. And once the checks start flowing, you know what happens as well as I do. Everybody forgets about everything and they go to work. I well, mean, that's, you know, that's what's happened in the past. Who knows? We live in a new era. But when, you know, when the money's flowing in, grudges go by the wayside pretty quickly. But remember when Don Drysdale and Sandy Koufax said, we're not going to pitch this year. We want a contract for each of us. And we want a, a, a flat sum. And here's the price. And this is what we're doing. And the Dodgers said, that's interesting. The answer is no. Hey, well, and, mm -hmm. But that's, a, again, that's a different time. You know, uh, I mean, you yeah, know, but the, the attitude toward the didn't like you. If he, if he wanted to walk, he wouldn't walk. He'd hit you with a baseball. Can you imagine somebody doing that today? He'd be suspended for like 30 days. I know. But for John Drysdale, it was a time-saving device. Yeah. You want him he on first base out, that's where I'll put him. He now, yep, now, exactly. Now, if Manfred came up with that and said, listen, it, it, instead of walking people with four pitches, just hit them once in the head and send them down to first. <laughs> Call it the Drysdale rule. <laughs> oh, I, by the way, I love the, what is it, 16-second rule between pitches or something? Crazy that the, that MLB is also proposing. They want to they do a time a, limit between a 30 pitches. Got a second one now. Nobody listen. Nobody watches it. The clock goes. I was, I was at the ballpark uh, open a day last year, and I'm watching the clock, and nobody's paying attention to the clock. The clock. I said, really? the clock for? Is a football game going to break out here or something? Oh man, too many men Gosh. on the field. <clears throat> yeah, way too many. Well, oh, gonna, well, Vinny's got an idea for a short center fielder, but how short does he have to be, Vinny? Well, you can't be over 4'8". <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people would get a kick out of the little legs running out. <laughs> <laughs> a, hey, white jo a white jockey on the grass. There you go, Rod. I can see it now <laughs> in, in center field. Oh, exactly. All right, oh, fellas. Guys. Listen, we have, uh, we've run over our time and... <laughs> And, and, and actually, we don't have the time that we, you know, but but we, we, we pretend we do. So let's pretend we're, we're running long. Yeah. Let's yeah. We're, we're going long here. Well, we're, we're running long. Before That's we it. let you go, any places around here that you're up here in uh, soon? Uh, I'm going to be down in Centralia Saturday. I don't even know the venue, but I'm going to be in Spokane next month doing that cancer show over there at the. Uh, uh, Big Crosby Theater. Ben Crosby Theater, yeah. I'll let my friends in Spokane know that you're coming out there. So if a guy named please, Peter please do, Vinny. Yeah, please do, man. Peter comes up to you. Who knows? Maybe I'll even come and take a ride out. I haven't been out there in a while. Uh, maybe I'll take a, get, get information on it and uh, and take a ride out there. I could. I've always had a good time in that town. <laughs> I'm huh? going to see the MC. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, he's going to come in front of the theater and start strong arming people. I know people in here. I know people. <laughs> I, I, know know people. People. I know, I know people. people. He beat his kids, so let's get real here. <laughs> it's good to see you, Rod. Good to see you, Vinny. We'll get together on Wednesday. All right, we'll get together. You guys, on take Wednesday. care. Thank you all for watching our little uh, radio show here that you can actually see. I call it Radio with Pictures. Uh, we will see you Wednesday morning if the Lord's willing and the creek don't rise. Uh, until then, remember, as Sammy used to say, peace, love, and Manischewitz, baby. What a wine. See you in Poland. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> so nice to see you.
Hey, Rod, um, yeah. let's, let's hook up sometime soon, man. Yeah, buddy. Let's do that. Just hit me up on Messenger. Yeah, I'll send you, I'll send you a message on Messenger. We'll, uh, we'll hook up. Okay, buddy. Good to see you, man. You're looking good. Thank you. You too, Vinny. All right. Take care. I love your background, buddy. Thanks, man. Talk to yeah, you man. soon. Bye. Bye-bye.